Hello again, welcome to another episode of the Uranium Market Minute. Today is Wednesday, December 22nd, and this is episode number 55. My name is Justin Hewn. I'm your host. I'm the founder and publisher of the Uranium Insider Pro Newsletter, the only investing newsletter that focuses solely on uranium and publishes on a regular monthly basis. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really been appreciating all of the comments and support on YouTube and on Twitter. If you do enjoy these videos, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. You will get a notification whenever we publish a new episode, which is just about every day. And before we get into today's content, nothing in this video is intended to be investing advice. I'm not your financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Please always do your own due diligence when it comes to investing and always take responsibility for your own choices. With that said, let's jump right into the daily scoreboard. Spot price of uranium today coming in at 4287 mid market, basically unchanged from yesterday. You can hear a pin drop in the market, especially in the spot market. Very, very quiet. Sprott remains out of the spot market. They did not raise any new capital, not buy any further pounds of uranium. They are still sitting on 26.8 million in cash. And their discount to NAV did shrink a bit yesterday with a pretty strong day in the uranium markets, although on relatively low volume. They came in at minus 3.4% as of the open today. Uh, shares generally a little bit weaker today, but a lot of the gains from yesterday being held, it's nice to see. Looks like a sideways low volume chop is going to be expected still. Um, to reiterate, they have acquired 23 million pounds since the 17th of August when their ATM went live. They've raised almost a billion dollars. They have 3.5 billion total allocation in the existing ATM. Turning to the sector equity ETFs on Friday, you excuse me, yesterday, URA reported 190,000 shares of redemptions. URM reported none, no change in outstanding shares. That's mandated selling of $3.2 million really not that much. Um, the data tends to lag by a couple of days. We've mentioned that before. Again, there have been a, a, a some redemptions. Primarily, there's been more redemptions coming from URNM than URA, interestingly enough. But considering the pullback, it's been relatively small amount of redemptions, maybe 50, 60 million in selling total coming from the ETFs over this last month, which, you know, that's sizable, but it really is definitely not what, what primarily drove that sell-off, in my opinion. Uh, the combined AUMs did jump yesterday by almost $100 million, thanks to a strong day for the shares. Uh, the combined AUM now sits just under $2 billion between URA and URNM. Turning to the markets and trading action, let's go ahead and take a look at the shares and the charts. Starting off with URA, selling off about 1.5% today so far. We've got another few hours of trading left in the day, um, another two hours or so, actually. Very low volumes, nothing really to write home about. Like I mentioned, I do expect we will probably see the sector as a whole continue to kind of chop sideways above this rising 200 day. That's really what I'd like to see. I'd like to form kind of a, a rounded bottom here. Um, as the sector finds a bottom, ideally it stays at or above this rising 200 day moving average, sets a really nice launching pad for the beginning of the next year, which is just you know, a week and a half away at this point. Um, again, we've seen, you know, an overall trend of volume falling, right? As we've seen, uh, the, the shares sell off on lower volume. That is what we want to see. And we want to see the opposite when things are moving up. This is kind of a broader trend that we're looking at with these, uh, very, um, uh, roughly drawn trend lines here, but for the most part, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about cycles whether it's a move that happens over a day or a week or even multiple months, we want to see rising volumes on the way up, declining volumes on the way down. And ideally, we do continue to see this sideways chop on low volume, which is what I'm expecting in a quiet market for the next week and a half. Spot Physical Uranium Trust actually up 1.6% today. <clears throat> the spot price flat, so we're actually getting closer to uh, trading at their net asset value. It's been a while. Um, again, I would expect this to kind of chop around in a range until the, uh, until the new year. And that's when we can see new funds allocated to, uh, to, to gain new exposure for the 2022 year. Did have um, one mailbag question come through YouTube yesterday. This came from uh, KI2500. It says, if there is a limit to the spot price that utilities can pay, what will then be the purpose of Sprott in the future? So, um, well, first of all, there isn't a limit to what utilities can pay in terms of the spot price. The example that I gave yesterday, and I, I believe I repeated that maybe a week ago, 
in terms of the contracts that we're hearing about uh, that were signed from an Asian utility um, with uh, an entity in Kazakhstan. We actually don't know if that was because Adam probably could have been um, one of the JVs in, in Kazakhstan. It could have been uh, CGN, it could have been uh, Uranium One, it could have been Urano, but of course it could have been because Adam Palm. Excuse me. Um, basically, there's no limit to what they can pay. When they sign these contracts, the reason that they might put a ceiling price for the market reference or spot reference portion of the contract is essentially to protect the utility that's contracting, right? So it does two things. It gives the producer exposure to the spot price with far greater upside to the current price or even the projected future price, right? So as far as the price reporters go right now, we see a spot price of you know 43 bucks a pound. We see a term price of 43, 44, 45. If you go out five years, it's right around the mid 40s. Why are they signing a contract with a ceiling price of $78? Well, it's because both entities expect the price to go much, much higher. In fact, utility expects the price to even surpass that, hence that ceiling. They're saying five years out, six years out, uh, the later part of that contract, they are not going to be willing to pay more than that price. So they're essentially accepting that the price is going much higher and that's where we're going to cap it at. Now that was just one contract and one example of one contract. Contract can look like a lot of different things. And, but to answer the second half of the question, which is what is the point of Sprott? The, the point of Sprott is to be a, an accumulator of physical pounds, essentially thinning out the market further and to, uh, to bring value to shareholders by holding this physical commodity the same way they do with their platinum and gold, platinum, palladium, their gold and their silver trusts, right? It's, it's holding the physical metals. It's a way for investors to gain exposure to the pure commodity. It's exactly the purpose of this trust. Of course, the effect on the markets of an accumulator of physical pounds that will not be selling those pounds back in the market, essentially a massive, massive new demand uh, new end user demand of uranium. So the purpose really um, from an investment standpoint is to tighten the market and to accumulate you know, excess pounds that are in the market because the physical funds really are not and haven't really been a core part of the thesis in terms of supply and demand fundamentals. You know, the supply and demand fundamentals are, are based on the actual you know, production of uranium and the secondary supply of uranium and the expected contracting cycle for utilities and looking out into the future and seeing a, a major gap between supply and demand. <clears throat> That's kind of the obvious thesis. And the, the financialization that has come into the sector really is kind of this, this bonus, this gravy on top for the investing community. And so for a vehicle like the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust, um, you know, that's a way for <clears throat> large investment funds to come into the space, gain exposure to the, to the commodity through a very highly liquid vehicle and essentially move the price up. So that's what we're seeing and that's what we're going to see going forward. Um, I also just wanted to make a quick note on, um, I do believe that a number of people got shaken out in this past few months, right? Especially this past four to six weeks. I think a lot of retail uh, got shaken out and you know, potentially frustratingly, and that's understandable. So I just wanted to make a couple of notes on resource markets. Young bull markets will test you. It's easy to look back at massive bull market and sector that ran from 2004 to 2007 and see those spectacular gains that were achieved. But if you weren't invested and you are now, you realize it's a lot harder to actually live it. Here are some rules to keep you in the game. So these are some things that we always keep in mind when investing in these spaces. Make a rational portfolio allocation to this sector because of its volatility. Okay. So obviously, if you've been in the sector for any reasonable amount of time, you see how volatile it is. What is a rational portfolio allocation? That is up to you, and that has everything to do with your age, your investment goals, uh, your, your risk tolerance, um, really what you're able to stomach in terms of volatility. <clears throat> so that's something I can't answer for you, and I won't answer for you. But it's something to think about. What is a rational portfolio allocation to the sector because of its volatility? I live, eat, and breathe this stuff in this sector. I don't have all of my money in uranium. I have most of my investable capital in uranium because it's what I know the best. And I believe it will outperform a number of other sectors, but there's plenty of other sectors that look ripe in this commodities play, this energy play, this inflation situation that we're looking at. Um, so <clears throat> make sure that you allocate rationally. Um, remember that this sector will hit above its weight. <clears throat> uranium outperforms when things move. Uranium's outperformed the broad market 6X in 2021. 
um, even with this pullback, uh, maybe 5x with this pullback. So it's uh, you don't need leverage. You, um, you should not use leverage. You shouldn't trade on margin. Um, short dated call options are a great way to blow up your account. When we use options trades, we either do long dated leaps or we do bullish call spreads as to protect the downside. <clears throat> Do not invest your total allocation at once. If you're just coming into the sector, it's good to enter in tranches. This is something we recommend to our members. Um, you don't wanna just go all in because the bullish sentiment can be overwhelming, especially when we're at euphoric tops like we were in mid-November. Going all in at, at cyclical tops is a dangerous play. Um, if, you, if you spread out your allocation to the sector over even a month or two, you most likely will see a sharp pullback and a place to uh, get more aggressive with that allocation. Um, do not become overinvested in any one name. Pay attention to your weightings. That should be obvious. Um, a lot of investors, a lot of retail invest investors that don't necessarily have a lot of experience will get really excited about a particular company. They'll come into Twitter with fist bumping gifts. They'll, uh, they'll think that the management is just the second coming of Christ, whatever it might be. You never want to over allocate to a single company because you have individual mining, individual company uh, risks that if you are over allocated to that company and there's a change in the jurisdiction, if um, the, the, that particular management sells a ton of their uh, insider holdings, whatever it might be, right? There's always a catalyst that could hit this individual company, positive or negative. And again, know yourself, investment amounts that are within your comfort zone. If you are very uncomfortable with this trade, like I've said many times, you're probably invested in too large positions. Um, so it's good to just keep all of that in mind. And again, um, our newsletter for the month of January, the Uranium Insider Pro subscribers will see this on the 4th, January 4th. That's Tuesday, the second trading day of the month and the year. And tomorrow will be our last Uranium Market Minute of 2021 and what a year it has been. Um, I'll definitely have some things to say about that. So thank you so much again for listening. And um, if you are interested in seeing a sample of our newsletter, click the link in the description and you'll be able to download a free sample from the previous month. All right. Have a great day, guys. Cheers.